Mr. Haffron here, and here's a short video on Radioactive Half-Life. Uh, one of my favorite games from my uh, late teens, early 20s was the game Half-Life. All right, so Half-Life is uh, the time it takes on average for half of a radioactive substance to decay into something new. Um, there's a couple ways of calculating it. Uh, one, you can use something called the decay constant, lambda, which uh, is the symbol from the game Half-Life as well, for that reason. All you have to do is take the, um, the natural logarithm of 2 and divide by the half-life. So if the uh, half-life was 10,000 years, it would be ln 2 divided by 10,000 years. Um, if you know the decay constant and you want to find out what the half-life is, um, you just take ln 2 and divide by the decay constant. Now, um, when you solve these problems, you may be asked to solve for activity. So that could be like A for activity. So the activity you have now is your original activity, A0, times um, E to the power of negative lambda T, where lambda is your constant, uh, decay constant. Or uh, you can use uh, 2 to the power of negative time divided by the half-life, T half. Uh, I see some books use an H there, but that does look like Planck's constant, so I avoid that. Or, um, 2 to the minus is the same thing as 1 half to the power, so that's just 1 half to the power of t time divided by t half. So all three of these methods work. Uh, so A for activity, and for the number of, uh, of, um, of atoms, or M for the kilograms of the atoms, or grams of the atoms. Okay. So for half-life, it kind of works like this. Um, if you have a 100 kilogram substance with a 100 year half-life, in 50 years, you'd be down to 50 kilos and 50 kilos. Uh, in another 50 years, so that's 100 years from the beginning, uh, you'd be down to 25 and 75. So your original substance cuts in half after a first half-life, cuts in half again in the second half-life, and it turns into something else, because the law of conservation of energy and mass says you can't create or destroy matter or energy, it has to turn into something else. So it's just, uh, so you still have the same total number, uh, amount of mass or energy. Okay, so let's just take a look at a few examples. You have a 100 gram sample of polonium-214, very dangerous radioactive substance with a half-life of 0.1643 seconds, and it undergoes alpha decay. So uh, how much of it is left after 0.25 seconds? So here we got the uh, the alpha particle turning, uh, sorry, the, uh, the particle turning into uh, a smaller, particle plus alpha, an alpha particle. So your polonium uh, 214 turns into helium 4, which is just an alpha particle plus lead 210. And so we're looking at mass. We'll use that for mass. So we have a 100 gram sample and uh, we'll use the 1 half formula. So 1 half times 0.25 seconds divided by 0.1643 seconds, the half life. And so in a quarter of a second, the 100 grams would decay all the way down to 34.8 grams of uh, polonium-214. If you'd rather use the decay constant, it's just ln 2 divided by the half-life, 0.1643. Uh, you're going to get 4.2919 uh, per seconds. You plug that into the equation with the E, uh, negative 4.219 per seconds times 0.25 seconds. And you get the same answer. So uh, if you like to use the decay constant or the half-life, doesn't matter. You'll get the same answer. So after a quarter of a second, the 100 gram sample of polonium turns into 34.8 grams of polonium and 65.2 grams of uh, helium-4 and lead-210. So uh, another example with a beta decay this time. So you got a 10 microgram sample of carbon-14, which is used for uh, carbon dating when they try to find out how long ago a tree died or a, or a saber-toothed tiger or something like that. So you take the uh, half-life of 5,730A, A for annum, for years. Okay, so you can use a Y or an A, doesn't matter. And it undergoes beta minus decay. So in this case here, uh, how much is left after 20,000 years or 20 millennium? So you yeah, now have the uh, the parent carbon fourteen. It's going to turn into some nitrogen fourteen. So uh, what happens is one of the uh, neutrons turns into a proton, and we're going to get an antineutrino, a little piece of antimatter, 
and an electron. So uh, we have 10 microgram sample. That's what we used to have, uh, or right, that's what we have, sorry. And um, minus 20,000 years divided by the 5,730. So after 20,000 years, the um, 10 microgram sample will decay all the way down to 0.89 micrograms or 890 nanograms. And you can do the same calculation using the decay constant if you like, and uh, the, uh, the base E version of the equation as well, and you'll get the same answer. <clears throat> so here's a fission one. So you had some uh, uranium-238. It decays into thorium-234 via alpha decay. Oh, sorry, no, so it's not fission story, it's alpha decay. With a half-life of 4.5 billion years. If a sample has 1 billion uranium-238 atoms, then how long ago was there 1.1 billion? So we're going to do a backwards question this time. So um, we have a 1 billion atoms now. We want to know when did we have 1.1 billion? All right, so we're going to use the 1 half of 0.5 to the power of t over 4.5 billion years. So all we have to do is divide the 1.1 over. So we get 1 over 1.1 1 .1 equals 0.5. So now to get the exponent here, we have to take the log or the natural log of both sides. And so we do that. And so we get the exponent by itself, t over 4.5 billion. You take the log of the other side, 1 divided by 1.1 logged and then divide by the base of your exponent, or your power, sorry, and that's uh, 0 0.5, log 0 0.5. And we get um, a negative answer, negative 0.619 billion years, or that's 619 million years ago. So the um, you used to have 1.1 billion atoms 619 million years ago. Uh, this also explains why radioactive waste is a problem, uh, because when we uh, when we get the radioactive waste out of a nuclear reactor, it's got a half life of four and a half million years, which is crazy. Uh, the Earth is only around four and a half billion years old, so um, and we are only expecting to survive about another four and a half to six billion years. So any radioactive waste we have, we're going to have it forever. So we got to find uh, safe places to put it. Okay. Example four, you get an oxygen 15 atom, and it's, uh, we have a half-life of 2.04 minutes, and it's providing 100 becquerels of uh, radiation activity, so it's pretty strong, I guess. How active was the sample 10 minutes ago? So another backwards question. This time we use the decay constant, so uh, we got ln 2 divided by 2.04 minutes, so it's 0.339778 per minutes. We're going to plug that into the activity uh, half-life equation. So that's 100 becquerels equals um, the new, sorry, the old activity, e to the negative 0.339778 per minutes times 10 minutes. And so what we're going to do is cross multiply the, um, cross multiply that over. Okay, and once we cross multiply and solve that, we get uh, 2,990 becquerels. And there you go. So in summary, there are two popular formulas for solving uh, problems involving half-life. The same equation work uh, applies to activity, mass, and the number of atoms. To find the decay constant lambda, just use the simple equation down below there, uh, ln 2 divided by t half. And also notice how uh, radioactive waste and some other radioactive substances that we make have half-lives, which are really up there like 4 billion years. And so it's really difficult to figure out what we're going to do with it. Um, also, they're saying, hey, what happens if civilization, uh, you know, falls and, and we have to restart civilization? People may not speak English or Chinese or uh, whatever, Hindu or whatever language is popular today. They may have new languages. And so how are we going to know that the signs that we have warning them are actually going to protect them from uh, accidentally digging up this radioactive substances? So uh, that's one of the things people are thinking about. All right. Good luck.